John Bile here, uh, author of Organizing Successful Tournaments, uh, fourth edition, uh, published by New Magnetics. Um, sometimes we need to kind of think outside the box to find a solution, and uh, Semi Round Robin is one example of that. I was asked once by Major League Baseball uh, to say we have these uh, weekend tournaments of seven entries, uh, let's say six entries, and that works perfectly because then they would have two pools of three. Everybody plays two games, and they would have a, a playoff structure uh, for the top two teams of each uh, to play each other. The uh, other option would be if you had uh, eight teams. Again, you get two pools of four. Everybody's guaranteed three games, and top two go into a, a playoff structure. But what happens if you have seven teams? That means one pool has three entries. The other pool has four entries. One pool is playing two games. The other is playing three, which also means that by the time you get to the playoffs, uh, the first round of the playoffs, the one team would be into their third pitcher, the other team would be into their fourth pitcher. So uh, it would disadvantage uh, the team that's playing more games, particularly in baseball. So we need to find a way that if you had three entries, or if you had seven entries, a pool of three, a pool of four, play the same number of games to determine who would make it to the playoff structure. So finally, uh, I came up with a solution. Basically, the pools of three would stay as pools of three and guaranteeing everybody two games. Need to figure out a way to have a pool of four also play only two games and determine who is first and second in that pool. So I came up with uh, what I've called semi-round robin uh, format. And uh, basically the way it works is this. Uh, match number one, let's just say A plays B, and match number two, C plays D. After that, the winners of match one play each other and the losers of match uh, two play each other. So winner of match one, winner of match two, loser of match one, loser of match two. Then we figure out who are the top two teams. So we've only played two games. How do we determine who won? Well, here's the seating implications. Let's just say we seated one and two in the one pool, or in the one playing each other in the first game, and three and four playing each other in, the, in that first uh, round as well. So if one and two uh, play, one would have won, and two would have lost, three would have won, and four would have lost. In that next game, one would have beaten three, because three would the winners play, the losers play each other, and two would have won. So now we've got uh, C1, 2, 3, 4, C1, 1 twice, C2 and 3 lost uh, lost 1 and 1, 1, so they would get 1, and C number 4 lost uh, both of their games, so had 0 wins. So how would we rank them? Well, basically you've got clarity of somebody who came in first, and clarity of somebody who came in fourth. We need to figure out who wins here. Now they didn't play, they didn't compete with each other, so then we would have to do something like a points for and against in terms of how they did with the other uh, with the other teams. Um, so I would probably do total points for, total points against, or what you could do is how well they scored against the fourth seed. Sometimes the higher seed can uh, has the higher seed typically has more control over the point spread than the lower seed. So rather than being influenced by the top seed with whom they have less, less influence over, uh, seeing how three did against four and two did, uh, so I think two did against four would be a way that I would probably suggest you do it. But you do need to have a tie-breaking procedure set up. Um, if you see that this way, uh, one playing three and two playing four, uh, one would be three, two would be four. Now one and two are gonna play, so one, uh, one wins, two loses, three beats four, and then loses. And again, same thing happens every single time. The second seed, so the number one seed is going to win both. Number the fourth seed is going to lose both, and there's going to be a tie between second and third. And again, we need a tiebreaker procedure to pull this apart. Uh, finally, uh, oops, sorry, I guess I can't scroll down. Um, so seed here, seed one plays four, and two and three play each other. 
this is going to be the preferred seating to have the strongest team and the weakest team playing in the first game. The reason is one's going to win, uh, four going to lose, two will win, three is going to lose. Next game, the winners play, so one and two play, one wins, two loses, three beats four, four loses. In the end, number one's got two wins, number four's got two losses, and they've got one and one. The tie is easier to break here because two and three have played each other and two beat three. So ideally, in this particular structure, uh, you want the weakest and the strongest to play in the first game, and then the other two, the middle teams, to play each other so you can break the tie by the teams competing against each other. In any event, um, what this uh, semi-round robin does is it has four teams competing with each other, each only playing two games, and we're able to determine who came in first and second based on, on that uh, process. Uh, the text has this uh, page that you can uh, print and sort it out. You can also do it on uh, online. Now, the different numbers are going to happen with different uh, groups. So with seven entries, for example, uh, we would have one division of three and one division of four in a semi-round robin. For eight entries, we would have uh, two groups of four. So one group of four semi-round robin, one group of four semi-round robin. Uh, then nine entries, I would just do th uh, three entries round robin, three entries round robin, three entries round robin, so there would be just three divisions of three. Ten entries, I would do two divisions of three and one division of four semi-round robin. Eleven entries, I would do uh, two, sorry, uh, seeing this one through, six, lost track of this one, ten entries, sorry about that. So 10 inch, 11, 11 in, well 12 entries would be three, uh, three, four groups of three. Uh, 11 entries would be three groups of three and one group of four. There we go. And then we would have uh, have everybody playing the right number of games. But again, in terms of Major League Baseball issue, I think I would do it here. The other advantage, <clears throat> the other advantage of uh, the semi-round robin is uh, there might also be expense time. So for example, if we're in an ice hockey tournament and uh, we're having, let's say, eight teams uh, come to, uh, to uh, have an ice hockey tournament, with the round robin uh, format, uh, each pool of four, so that would be three times four is 12 divided by two is six. So you'd have 12 games uh, with eight entries. If we did eight entries with uh, the semi round robin, both of them are also uh, uh, at eight. Did that wrong. Four times three is twelve is six. There's going to be twelve games. So it'd be twelve games with the regular, uh, twelve games with the regular round robin, and uh, eight with semi round robin. So we've reduced the ice time by four. So the cost of the tournament would be significantly reduced, and we would uh, still know who came in first and second in those uh, different uh, those different formats. The uh, you can do this one. Uh, online as well uh, by downloading uh, Semi Round Robin from the uh, Human Kinetics website. And basically, uh, sorry, here we go. Uh, so we just down we downloaded it. We then go to the downloads, Semi Round Robin. <coughs> and you can either uh, have them playing on different locations or shared locations. So let's just go to different locations for now. So in the baseball example of uh, seven entries on two divisions, uh, two locations that are different, going through one time, we can pick it out like this. Um, and then we would, again, just without filling it in, uh, this first schedule uh, here is the semi-round robin so it would, it would populate automatically and we could fill it in here. And then below, we would have the uh, just a regular round robin. So let's just fill it in and we can see how that uh, looks. So let's just call it uh, semi. Uh, 
August went in and cut, so I can And again, you can see how I've got a few hot plates and see how which is in the And uh, let's go C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, location 1, location 2, day, Monday. So the four teams, three and five, uh, one and seven. So again, three and five are hopefully going to divide the tie between them. One and seven are the weaker teams, uh, the strongest and the weakest team uh, playing each other through. And we could complete the schedule that way. And then below here is the regular round robin as they uh, as they complete, as they complete uh, their tournament as well. Time-wise, it doesn't take uh, that much longer. Uh, they're playing uh, at two, uh, sorry, they're playing on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And they're playing, uh, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, you can get all the games in and make it work. And everybody's played two games and uh, solution. So you're trying to reduce some costs for ice time or facility use. Uh, if you have unbalanced schedules, you want them to play the same same number of games, send it around Robin is an excellent way to, to do that. Thanks.